Vigilante Williamson here with a clip from my show. We all know the laws of the land. It's foretold from a long time ago. Thou that goes woketh, thou whom goes woketh, shall surely be broketh. So congratulations to the Los Angeles Lakers. LeBron has his fourth championship. We'll see how they, you know, he's the match of each ring county. To me, as a former sports fan, this ring, I'm not really a fan of the weighting of rings, saying this one is more important and this one is less. Because if we do that, guess who has the most important one? The 04 Pistons, biggest underdog to ever win a championship, and we won it in five games. So no championship of the last 30 years could be more impactful than that. I don't care what you say about the Golden State Warriors. If you have LeBron and Kyrie both doing something historic, averaging 30 points on a team, and taking seven games, don't tell me something about a team that at least three Hall of Famers near prime um, as far as the Lakers that we beat. But I, I digress. As you see, I'm, I used to be a, uh, a passionate sports fan. And the NBA has really pissed me and a lot of people off. And one of the things, the major things, because I'm, I'm a free speech advocate, I think it's stupid to have uh, that Marxist organization on their court. But if they were a little bit more open to free speech, like the UFC, they allow BLM, they allow uh, Blue Lives, they allow whatever. They allow the fighters to be individuals, and I think that's the best way if you're going to do it. Allow everything. Uh, don't have it. Not, I touched on in a previous video when Jonathan Isaac stands up. He has people asking him, "Does Black Lives Matter?" I don't do you know? Do you, does Black Lives not matter to you? Don't have, ask a black man that. It was a, it was a disrespectful. Uh, disrespectful reporter who I previously had a little bit more respect for. But the thing that really grinds my gears with China or with NBA is China. It really grinded my gears that you're putting out all this social justice. And look at it. Is LeBron James the greatest of all time? No, he's not. No, he's not. Um, <sighs> This I don't know. I don't know how to judge the ring. I'm, I'm really it's really weird to judge this championship. Like I said, just because of the bubble, it's it's just weird. It's like the, the ninety nine, it's like the ninety nine Spurs team. But um, as I, that, the little thing, the Pat McAfee thing, kind of threw me off. But it really grinded my gears with all the human rights devastation of China and all the things China has done and. You are bending over for them. You cannot get any personalized NBA jersey at all because they're scared you'll put free Hong Kong. You can't put your name on a jersey because they're scared you'll put free Hong Kong. And they just don't want the crap. And as you see, because uh, this is a uh, game five aired in China, it's been a year since the Daryl Morey tweet. Oh, shit. This is not what I. I'll get into that a little bit later. But the NBA is removing BLM for their courts. It'll be a large return to normalcy, says Adam Silver. So maybe it was the 60 plus percent ratings drop and the interest drop that made them think, OK, we're going to get rid of all this crazy woke messaging. I'm sure it was. But they're still airing in China. Or they're back to airing in China, I should say. Back to renewing their vows with China. Back to bending over for China. Back to, and I, I had the Disney thing. Disney, they need the authenticity, so they have to film their concentration camps. We're back to this. And, of course, Disney is also a partner of the NBA through ESPN, who is laying people off. That hypocritical garbage is why I don't know if I'll ever watch the NBA again. And I, I part of me, as I say that, I know there's a lot of class of us who think we'll never watch sports again, and may and there's a lot of us who won't. A lot of us will never come back. But then I I look at Outkick and I love Outkick, right? I love uh, I love a lot of the, the sports wars, black and white sports. I like this anti woke sports movement, but th its very existence has is like a sort of an issue, right? Um, that it exists proves that our people that are angry at sports but they're still interested in sports. And 
sports as a whole has to be, you know, worried at because there's an economic impact of the loss of revenue from fans. Um, I saw something. I should have pulled it up. I meant to pull it up. Um, but th- there's a huge economic impact. There's um, a lot of things working against sports right now. And their woke messaging is going to put off a lot of fans. And I spoke about the outkicks of the world, this anti-woke uh, sports coverage. Those platforms, I, I used to follow wrestling really heavy. And I used to follow kind of similar tell it how it is type content creators in the wrestling space and loved them. And I got to a point in interest in wrestling where I, I, I only follow the content creators even more so than the product just because I, I really enjoyed the creators. But I, I didn't even have an interest in the product anymore and eventually I faded off of those creators. And I can see that happening for the greater world of sports because sports co- is so connected to so much commercially and culturally that they will dissipate their worth so much that other things connected to them will also dry up. Um, Outkick's biggest issue is the fact that they're right. Oh, that was annoying. Um, The fact that they're right means eventually those fans are just not going to be interested in sports anymore. And I think the NBA in particular... I mean, with me, they've done a ton of damage. I'm, you know, still got the Pistons. I love Detroit. I love my home team. You'll still probably send me a memorabilia, right? But I don't see myself, and I, I'm someone who paid for the lead pass. I was getting back into sports pretty heavy. I, I, there's still a lot to like about basketball. I want to get back into playing it uh, recreationally. <sighs> but, man, the, the double whammy of, of promoting this Marxist, Subversive, organ, subversive organization and BLM who only wants the destruction of America and you support them and you push them meanwhile making billions between and I've contributed to it I've been a sneakerhead through various patches of my life buying these uh, uh, gym shoes along with tons of other Americans the whole StockX culture right all off of cheap labor in China um, they'll have they have concentration camps there. Disney has no problem justifying it. A little live TV. Uh, Disney has no problem justifying it. They have no problem justifying it. They'll they'll suppress your free speech. You can't even put free Hong Kong. You can't put anything on the back of a jersey now. I I, I just I don't like this. You know, and I'm not gonna. I'll probably be a tangential fan, like I said with. Uh, like I was a wrestler. I'll, I'll follow OutKick. I'll follow Black and White Sports. I'll follow Sports Wars. I'll follow all these channels. I'm not going to follow the real product much. Maybe certain games. Maybe, you know. Um, and it's sad because it doesn't have to go this way. They ask, is LeBron James the greatest ever? You know what? I'm going to answer that question for me. And I'm not going to say hell no. He's a top 10 player. Maybe this ring. Maybe with this ring he should be in my top Five for sure, for sure, make, which would actually put him in my top four because my top five as it stands in this order, and you can get mad, whatever. Bill Russell, number one. Michael Jordan, number two. Kareem, number three. Larry Bird, number four. Magic Johnson, number five. That's my top five. And I can make the argument that... Ooh, no. Technical issues live. Who knows what my point was before that happened. <laughs> oh, is LeBron the, the, the greatest ever? And I gave my top five. Like I said again, I reset that. My top five all-time NBA, Bill Russell, I think 11 championships. I don't care who you're doing it against. is incredible. And people don't even know the story about him. Like I said, if you want to do the waiting rings thing, please know that when he was outside of his prime, he was the player coach and he won his last championship against a team that had Wilt Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, and Jerry West on it. Again, outside of his prime with no real, uh, true, true Hall of Famers outside of John Helvacek on his team. He had Hall of Famers, but no one that was in their prime. And he won. And he won 11th, uh, his 11th championship in that state. And uh, I think he's the greatest player of all time. I understand that Jordan, you know, from a modern era is... But I just think what Bill Russell did is so incredible and just so underrated. 11 championships is just unfathomable. 
And again, Jordan is my second. Uh, for all the reasons you would think Jordan is the greatest player ever. I think he's the greatest modern era player. Um, he's the reason the NBA became a global brand. And if not him, it would probably be uh, the combination of even the next three. I don't even put Kareem in there because he was a part of the Showtime Lakers. Uh, Kareem would be my third uh, greatest player of all time. And I have Larry Bird slightly over Magic, even though Magic won more times. I just feel like Magic's team is a little bit better. And I know that the team thing is a lot of where people put LeBron in there. People have LeBron at one. I'm not going to scream at you if you think LeBron James is the greatest player of all time. Um, even before this, you know, I think he played well enough just from his play. I'm not talking about the politics and all that. Because um, when you add the politics, it's, it's, it's really hard to put him up there because he may have destroyed the league as far as the, uh, the interest. But I think LeBron James has definitely played himself into that conversation. Obviously, a lot of people have him as the number one overall. And they'll list out all these statistics. When it comes down to it, who you have as your number one is really going to be a personal thing. That's with anything. Um, there are so many great players that played their way into that greatness. There are so many great NBA players. That, and if you just watch a highlight tape, you watch a highlight tape on Walt Chamberlain, look at his stats, you might think he's the greatest. You know what I mean? So I, I really think it's, it's always been a personal decision because Brian is of this era. He's the best of this era. I think a lot of people are just going to say that. It's natural. And he has his fourth ring. Um, like I said, it's it's kind of really hard to... That's why I don't like waiting rings um, too much, even though I did <laughs> in this podcast. It's impressive, but, I mean, this... It really feels like it was set up for him to win. I mean, it's not like Kobe doesn't have a ring that was set up for him to win. It's not like other people don't have rings that, you know, they were set up for them to win. Uh, he's now 4-6 and six in the finals. I mean, four MV, finals MVPs, this playoff is really hard to judge this ring. It, whoever won it. Um, I do want to say a quick aside. Jimmy Butler's played his way in the Hall of Fame. Um, he took a team that was not in the playoffs, even though they were scrappy and have a lot of talent on it. He took them to the finals, got a triple-double, a 40-point triple-double to keep his team alive. I just think he played well enough to be... Okay, he, he's crossed over to Hall of Famers. So I just want to toss that out there. But LeBron James is one of the greatest. I think he has a lot of accomplishments, and I understand why you would put him amongst the great. When you add the off the court, the off the court is going to hurt him because it's going to hurt him if you're, depending on who you are, is going to help him. If, you, if, if you're someone who, for my purpose, or I believe, will be falling for a lot of Kool-Aid, with Mr. James, um, he's a hypocrite. He makes so much money off of China. China doesn't even, you know, like us. And he, he talks all this BS about this fake black rice thing. And he's reading Malcolm X. He, he's just so fraudulent and it, it's annoying. But even though I feel that way about him, I'm going to separate that from me judging him as an athlete. Um, this ring... I, if I sit and think about it, I'm, I could see myself putting him as high as number four. And the next challenge for me on my list being Kareem, um, which is could, could be something he, he surpasses. So I, that's where I have him for my list. He's probably the number four. I kind of always had him, Magic, and Bird tied. But I, I picked Bird, Magic, LeBron. Um just because I feel like Bird was so dominant his first nine years. I mean, he Michael Jordan never beat him, even scoring 60 points. And a 69 points, great game, he lost the game. And yes, Bird had a talented team, but I don't think his team was nearly as talented. Even though I love Kevin McHale, Robert Parrish, Danny Ainge, Dennis Johnson, Bill, Wal Bill Walton off the bench. They had a great team, no doubt. All those teams in the 80s were stacked. Even the Pistons, all those 80s teams um, were stacked. Even the Hawks. Hawks were stacked, bro. I mean, all those teams, the TV win titles were stacked in the 80s. The Nuggets, you know what I mean? Uh, the Houston Rockets during different iterations in the 80s, just were, they were stacked. A lot of these teams were stacked. So, Larry Bird being as great as he was in that era, I know it's concurrent with Magic. I just feel he, I edge him out a little bit of Magic. I edge him out a little bit above LeBron. Before this ring, I could talk myself to him as high as four. 
I don't have him as the greatest player of all time. If you're a diehard Brian head, I'm not going to argue with you. He's played himself into that category, even if this ring is a bit of a, just a downer with the lockdown. It's hard to judge it. 